today I'm doing my April wrap-up. Side note, there's a lot of noise happening outside. If you hear it, just ignore it. We're just gonna keep going. So before I jump into what I read in April, there were two books that I ended up finishing in March, so I'm gonna talk about those first. First is The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. This is the first book in her Wedding Date series. It's about a man and a woman who meet on an elevator and he needs a date to his ex's wedding. And so he asks her. I DNF'd it at 22%. I got six chapters in and I talk a little bit more about this in my Authors I'm Giving a Second Chance video because I will be giving Jasmine Guillory a second chance. But I don't need racism in my romance. This just wasn't it. I, it it just wasn't good honestly it really wasn't so i will be reading while we were dating by her a little later i have the audio on script so i might get to it sooner rather than later but if i don't like the second book i will not be reading anything else by jasmine guillory the other book that i finished in march was the sea witch by katie robert this is book five in the wicked villain series i believe it is a little mermaid retelling so it includes ariel ursula and eric but their names are Zeriel, Ursa, and Alaric. I didn't like it. I rated this two stars. It was just stupid. Like the plot was stupid. And I know that this isn't necessarily a book that people read for the plot, but at least in the other ones, the plot was actually interesting. There were high stakes and it was well written. This one just wasn't. It's also kind of like learn my lesson, but gender swapped. Like, I don't know, it just, it wasn't good. So I have one more book in the series, uh, Queen Takes Rose. I honestly don't know if I'm gonna like it, but we'll see. I'm glad to be finishing the series. And I do like Katie Roberts, so I will start to read her other series. Um, I've been listening to all of these on script, and I do know that her one of her Taboo series is also on there, so I'll probably uh, start in on that next. So on to the books that I actually read in April, starting off with Children of Blood and Bone. It was okay. I gave it three stars. It wasn't spectacular. Would I have enjoyed it a little more if I had read it when it first came out? Probably. I think I would have. Um, it is very loosely based on Avatar The Last Airbender, and so you do get to see sort of that dynamic, which is pretty cool. But I didn't love it. I didn't love it. And again, I am not always a huge fan of YA fantasy. However, there were just some things in here that I just, I was just like, this is stupid. I don't care. I don't care. So like I said, this is based on Avatar The Last Airbender. So it's been like 11 years since magic has been taken away. And suddenly our main character finds her powers awakening because she touched this magical scroll that was brought to her by the princess. And there's all this other shit going on. And honestly, it could have been good. There was potential, I will say that. But yeah, three stars. Um, I'll be donating this to my library of black literature because I don't feel the need to keep it. The next book that I read was My Sister the Serial Killer. I was really excited about this one because I thought it was going to be really good. This is literally about a woman whose sister is a serial killer. So the main character is a nurse, I think. And she has a crush on this doctor in her hospital and her sister starts dating that doctor after she has already killed someone so she starts to worry about his safety and this one was uh, I don't know what it is about it I, I was so intrigued by the concept it starts off strong but it was fucking boring I ended up bringing this 2.25 stars it definitely had potential but I don't know I mean in the end like the ending wasn't terrible. The beginning was good, 
but everything in between no thank you so another donation for my library then i had an arc of american royalty this is a story that is loosely based on prince harry and Meghan markle our male main character is a prince and our female main character is an american rapper unfortunately this was another dnf i dnf'd at 24 percent um at this point in the story first of all this book is like 500 pages why I don't know, but it damn sure don't need to be that long, first and foremost. Secondly, the rapper, I, I didn't dislike her. However, there was a situation going on with this pop star who was like trying to start a feud with her and it was just really fucking weird. And then because of it, it was affecting her brand deals and shit and the way that the brand handled it just really fucking pissed me off. And I feel like she's gonna have to give in to them. I might do like a little video explaining more about why I DNF this and why I didn't like it, um, a DNF review if you will, but it just wasn't working out and I just also didn't care, but also a quarter of the way through and the main characters still ain't even met each other. Like, it just wasn't for me, it didn't work out for me. Next, I read Getting Schooled by Christina C. Jones. This is the first book in her Wright Brothers series. I read this as one of my 12 recs by 12 friends from Heather. It's also on a list of contemporary romances that I got from Nicole. So double recommendation there. And I have to say, I really enjoyed it. I ended up rating it four and a half stars. So finally, I broke my losing streak with romance because I had a really good start with the kiss quotient and then everything from there until now was a fail. So in this one, our female main character is a teacher's aide for her mother or grad assistant, grad assistant, grad assistant for her mother who teaches at a college. And then the male main character is a student in that class. And the grad assistant has really enjoyed his work and his writing and the way he thinks. And she's like, oh, he's so sexy. And then they meet each other in real life and immediately dislike each other because of like preconceived notions and whatnot. But at the end of the day, I really enjoyed this. It was super cute. All of them are on Kindle Unlimited. So I'm super excited to dive into this series and finish it. And then I also want to start in on her other series, which if I'm remembering correctly, they're like the cousins of the brothers or something, but all sisters this time, something like that. Anyway, I, I'm i very disappointed in myself for waiting this long to read anything by CCJ, so I definitely gotta fix that. Then I tortured myself a little more and read Children of Virtue and Vengeance because like a dumbass, I bought this a while ago and never read it. As everyone has said, this one is incredibly disappointing because the rules of the magic system were kind of just thrown out the fucking window. There's also something mentioned in this book that wasn't addressed that I feel like is gonna come back in the third book and it's like gonna come back to bite everybody in the ass because like uh, it's mentioned that something that happened at the end of book one there was like a thing that no one knows what happened to and I'm like no no that is a terrible sign come on now use your brain use your brain because okay anyway um two stars did not love and i see why even people who enjoy the first book are really disappointed in this one how the fuck she's gonna rectify this in the third one i don't know if it's possible at this point i will not be reading the third one um i don't care enough like i said though i will probably watch the adaptation because i do think that if the technology is right then it could look really cool but uh yeah another donation for the library so great day for the library. The next book that I read was These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. So this is a book that Dasha really enjoyed and that B recommended to me for my 12 Rex by 12 friend. And I was like, okay, I wasn't really interested in this. I don't give a fuck about Romeo and Juliet. However, I got two people who I really trust telling me that this is good. So I'm going to go into it with high hopes. And I ended up rating this four stars. It is very loosely Romeo and Juliet. Like there is a former relationship between these two rival gangs, the Scarlet Gang and the White Flowers. But it's not super heavy on that. There's no, uh, oh, I'm going to kill myself because I think you're dead. And 13 and 17 year old, like none of all of that. So like all the cringe has been removed. But... This takes place in 1920 Shanghai and there is what's being called the madness going around. People are saying that they see a monster emerging from the water and then there's some sort of contagion going around that is forcing people to rip 
out their own throats and it's so weird and I just I don't know I was so intrigued by it and so I really enjoyed the ending. If you are interested in 1920 Shanghai and rival gangs and a very loose sort of will they won't they romance then I highly recommend this. I really enjoyed this and I really hope that I enjoyed the second one just as much. Then I tried to read The Gender Game. I have had this book on my Kindle for a very long time. It is on Kindle Unlimited but it's like a seven book series and it's essentially about the this country has essentially been split into two where one side is a patriarchy and one side is a matriarchy. I mean the concept is kind of interesting but I DNF'd it at 7% because frankly it was boring and I don't see myself making it through the rest of this series and from what I read I mean they were explaining like the history of the country and I just didn't care because essentially what happens is if you're a woman born on Patris your life sucks you have no rights and literally like there's like a line that says like you have as many rights as a pet animal or some shit like that and then if you're a man born on Patris you have a little bit more rights but your life still sucks and so it opens with the main character a young girl trying to get her brother across the pages but they get caught it wasn't giving so I dnf that um and I will not be continuing that series and the last book that I read was me attempting to read more cozy mysteries again and I ended up picking up Arsenic and Adobo. Y'all have finally found what I like! I rated this four stars, I absolutely loved it and I am going to continue the series. This is the first time that I am actually intrigued enough to continue a cozy mystery series and oh my god I'm so excited. I think I'm gonna do a full review of Arsenic and Adobo because I, it was just, it was good. It was finally fucking good. So in this, we are following Lila Makapagal and her family. Why aren't y'all at school? Anyway, um, what was I saying? So Lila's Tita Rosie owns a restaurant and there is this food critic who is also Lila's ex-boyfriend who comes in and he's eating and then dies like face plants in the middle of his food and so now they're being accused of murder their kitchen has to get shut down because it's under investigation and there's all this other shit going on and i really enjoyed this so there were a few things that prevented me from giving it five stars there were some characters that i did not love however most of the things that i didn't like in the first book have essentially been removed so i feel like i'm going to enjoy the next book in the series I'm really excited. I'm really, really happy that I finally found a cozy that I like and I really loved the cultural aspect of it. Maybe that was something that I needed. I mean, one of the cozies that I read was written by a black author. However, there was like a story instead of a story that I didn't love. And so that one is like second on my list. That was the one that I had enjoyed the most up to this point. So maybe, maybe that's it. I don't know. I mean, I kind of feel the same way about romance. I tend to enjoy romances written by authors of color more. Maybe that's the secret. But like I said, I will probably do a full review of Arsenic and Dobo when I can. But yeah, those are all the books that I read in April. It was, it wasn't a great reading month. But we ended on a high note, so that is good. Let me know if you have read any of these or if any of them are on your TBR. Otherwise, that's all I have for you today and I'll see you in the next video.